I, I would ask that if it's being recorded, I'm okay with that. However, there's some very pertinent information that's going to be said in this meeting that does not need to be released until after the press conference. So what I'm press not conference? Ask every time. Thursday. Thursday. About what? It's going to, that's, we're going to talk about it that during the meeting. That's why we're here today. I don't know if we can, I don't know if we as a board can be involved in that Hold conversation. On. I think we're a violation. Hold on. I'm talking. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't want a lot of, I got a little time, this is my off day, I'm gonna come here and do business, I'm gonna do it the right way, all right? So it's One, illegal for us. No, it's not illegal for us. What happened was, what I was told was, it's a collaborative effort. It's not just you all's um, team that's meeting today, it's several teams that are meeting today, and it's a meeting. So I was told that we're not in violation. That's what I was we're told. We're not in violation because it was made public. Right, and went right. Out, but it still has to be open to the public. Yes, 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 we, and we can, we can post it, we can post it after Thursday. That's not an issue. That's not a problem at all. I so we don't know if it works that way. I mean, I don't. I don't know for sure. There are probably are, are more experienced people there in, in the room. I we've never had a special meeting before. I just want to make sure that we're not violating the ordinance in any form of way by moving forward. I'm I'm totally okay with having the conversation. I just don't know if if we can. Oh, no. Just a minute. You said that you got you were reaching out for clarification as well. You know who you reached out to, or when these questions were raised. Are you talking to me, Brian? Yes. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? You said that you were reaching out for clarification yourself, and that um, there were some questions being raised. You know when? Uh, as far as the, the the meeting being public, that's my own personal concern. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure because I know that that was we were hit over the head with that over you know our first few months that we couldn't kind of meet if there was more than three of us together it had to be made public or else it's a quorum or we're in violation and this feels as if though we're in violation. So what he's doing now to verify that he's doing, uh, Brian is on that. I was told. So you got wait, 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 wait. I'm talking. You're not talking. I just told you that I will, I will excuse from this meeting. I you don't have I'm, authority to I actually do. I actually do. I'm running this meeting. You do not. Hold on. The mayor doesn't. This is a special voluntary Pause. meeting. Pause. Pause. Let's just be clear. I want to be clear with you. You don't want to touch me. Pause. It's all that. We are all here to get work done. I'm going to say it again. It's the last time I'm going to say it. If you're not comfortable being here until he finds out what the ruling is, you can excuse yourself. We're going to move forward. We're going to do what we need to do to get this done. The community is hurt. I don't have time for games. I don't have time to be arguing and fussing. I'm a straight shoot. I respect you. But let me be very clear. We're going to move forward. Now, when he comes back, he will have the official ruling. I asked him to look up the actual rule for us so we can all be comfortable. But we have work to do. There are things and lives and people that are at stake. We got to get this done. All right, Go ahead. It seems like a good time for me to tell you that I'm resigning. Thank y'all. Have a great day. So we, we're going to move forward with this meeting and do what we can to get this right. And we're going to hear everybody's concerns. But I'm asking you guys, because some of us this is our first time doing doing something together. This is a collaborative effort. There's no hidden agenda on our part. Me and my dear brother, he's also our co-chair. We're coming to do work. We're, we're coming to do what we can to be a bridge, do what we can uh, to bring safety to the community, to get some questions answered, and to move forward. That's all that this is about. There's a press conference that is coming up on Thursday. We're going to give you more detail about that. Um, in this press conference, we're going to talk about these two boards being doing a collaborative effort to do some things that are needed to be done to facilitate unity, safety, and collaboration. That's all. It's not going to be a, a witch hunt or, or political agendas and all that stuff. 
is simply going to let the community know because many of them are asking, what is being done? What are you guys doing? Men don't even know the mayor has these task force. And I feel so much better because at my church, people come to my church almost every day. They walk off the streets, they ask questions, gang members, all types of people. And last week, did I not say this, my brother? I was I was concerned because some of people that were coming in there were saying, hey, uh, we're done communicating. And that's going to change the climate of our community. And I don't want their, those lives on my shoulders. So I'm going to do what I can to facilitate, to facilitate change. And I believe every person that's here is about that. This, this sister has been a proven leader for decades in Wyandotte County. And I trust her. I trust her. So I'm asking, if we have questions, you know, let, and ask your questions, but at the same time, let's come in and do work. Let's let come me, in and do work. Let me just say something. Um, the pastor seemed very passionate about his concern. Um, and I have the same concerns. That's kind of how we got together. Yes. In no way are we going to disrespect the LEA board. Everybody has a voice Absolutely. as it relates to LEA board. Um, this came together. Matter of fact, we met on, I think, Thursday, and then here we are today. It wasn't no under the table, round the corner. Uh, I didn't meet with the mayor. I didn't have no discussion with the mayor basically reached out to uh, Reverend Bradshaw because of the concerns and how my phone have jumped off the hook and people have come to my office about what's going on in the community. And so I said, people don't know what we do. They don't know what your group does. So we need to come together and collaboratively say to the community, you can come to D spot. This is who we are and what we do. In some of the uh, sheets we received, the survey sheets from our listening session, that's one of the major things people were saying. What do you do? How can we reach you? And so here we are. And so it is no hidden, hidden agenda. Anybody that knows me, I come straight from the hill. I fear nothing. So this is not about no negativism, no ugliness. And, and, and that's a very valid question uh, that Ms. Richardson raised in terms of, because we know the three, there's a quorum, but this was no closed session. It was a working session. Um, it was public uh, in terms of us being able to call it a meeting. Ryan will let us know what that movement is for a quorum session. Um, speaking of the agenda, I wanted uh, one of my co-chairs to have words uh, before we move forward um, and introduce yourself as well. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I don't know everybody's name, so then I apologize for a little late. My name is Damon Daniel, president of the Ad Hoc Against Crime. Uh, I am a recent appointee to this committee. Uh, from what I understand in terms of the conversations that have been last week that led to the invitation to come to this meeting really was about providing some clarity in terms of the difference in between the law enforcement advisory committee, uh, law enforcement advisory board, and the uh, crime and safety justice committee uh, as well. And so I think that part of what we want to do today is to establish some talking points so that we all know the differences between those. And then secondly, let's look at how do we come forward in a collaborative way to let the community know these two uh, bodies exist and then invite the community into the process of us convening and meeting with them and hearing the concerns of the community. That's right. And so I, I want to pick it back up that I want to apologize if anybody felt like I was I was one to you, my brother. I'm just what I asked you. It's my, it's my off day. The Lakers are playing. Right. I, I want to get this done so I go on rest because I got a full schedule. Um, but I, I also wanted the uh, chief of police also and uh, some of the others to have words as well. And then we're going to jump right into the agenda and we're going to be out of here the next 30 or 40 minutes. 
Brian is coming back with the with the official rule, you know, so you know everybody can be who um, I asked to go look at an official for us. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. We are being recorded, um, and it is going to be posted. So is everybody good? Yes, sir. And I, for example, we have scheduled to ride. I don't know everybody here. Is it okay with you all? Right. Yeah. 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 Intros. And what board you slam in with what you go to our It's the nice enough who's at the table. Uh, I'm Marcus Link. I am uh, on the law enforcement advisory board appointed uh, by Brian and Kieran and represent District 2. Yeah. Okay, so we go around the wall and then here and then. I'm Reed I'm not a member of the board. I'm, I work for the uh, legislative auditor's office. Jeff Conway, UG Legal. Jenny Cole, UG Legal. I'm Paul Salkuk. I was uh, appointed by Commissioner Johnson. I'm uh, current president of Wanda County Against Crime. I'll take it home. Sheriff Jim Lasso. It works. See you later, guys. Robert Cross. Ribbon Branch. Uh, hey, Brian, I'm Brian Sonson, uh, here's my source. Will it do a Latimer chair at the LEA board? I'm Lynn Milton, I'm appointed by uh, Commissioner Mike Payne. Wayne Beth, I'm appointed by the chair. Thank you. Can we get up on the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Tonda Hill, Tonda Hill Assistant District Attorney in Wyandotte County. Irene Galdio, President and CEO of El Centro on the LEA as a sheriff appointee. Tamara Barnes, Executive Director of the Loving Space Foundation. Thank you everyone for being here. Hey everyone, Kimberly DeWitt. Uh, I was interested in being on the task force and I ended up here. I you know, I mean, think that talk about I think we are transparency, justice, and not fame, fortune, and attention. Uh, and I think we have to keep our agendas, you know, aside from whatever we believe, whatever organizations we're part of, um, that can't bleed into this into this board. And I'm apologize to all of you because as we do this. There's things I can't say. I know you guys want me to say it, but we've got two attorneys here, and oftentimes there's things that come up in here that has pending litigation. And unfortunately, be saying it might be great for someone's Twitter feed or whatever, but I can't say it because of pending litigation. So I'm going to apologize to you guys up front. Um, so don't think that I'm not being transparent as Damon knows. I'm, I'm, I'm very transparent. If I can say it, I'm going to say it. But at the same time, uh, I'm not irresponsible either. So that's all I'm going to say. That's a pretty old accusation. And I think if you believe that people have used this board for fame and attention, like First of all, I didn't say anyone did. I said the board is not here for that. Brian is going to give us the information. Oh, the sheriff's, the sheriff's I think I'll reserve my comments for the next time. Brian just gave me, he said that because we're not elected officials, we can fire. We're not in violation, so we're good to go. I wanted to uh, dig into uh, two things. Number one, partnership between the two boards. Uh, 
I think that, that is important. In fact, um, the law and the law of advisory board, you guys kind of start the process, and uh, we'll be attending some of you guys' meetings. You guys start the process, and it's kind of like a baton. Once you guys discuss certain things, then we take it on and uh, we vote with our board, and then we get it to the floor for the commissioners. Uh, that's how I always explain how the process works. Um, so I'm excited to work with you guys. I've heard great things about this board. I heard you guys are fiery. I heard you guys are passionate. I'm with it as long as it's productive. So I'm, I'm excited to work with you guys and to really do some real work and uh, do what we can to uh, make Wanda County a safer place for everybody, citizens, um, those that work for the city, everybody. Because if neither side feels safe, guess what? We all lose. And uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward today uh, that we can take some very necessary steps. Now, I, I do want to open the floor as we begin the agenda. What does partnership look like to you between two boards? Does anybody want to harp on that a little bit? I have a question. Can sure. you explain what your task force does? Public safety, and, of it. Yeah, public safety and justice. Um, we deal with uh, hopefully getting some ordinance changes on the floor uh, so the commissioners can vote. We present ideas that have been voted on we go through the, uh, I don't want to say, like I said, the democratic process. We discuss things. For instance, uh, there's a law right now in that county that you can go to jail for spitting on the ground, uh, something that small. That's one of the things uh, that our board is going to be working on uh, to possibly get up on the floor with the commission to get that changed so a person doesn't have to go to jail. Another thing that uh, uh, we're working on, uh, we haven't even discussed it as a board, but it's one of the things that I, I've cited is I would like to see in the future um, that if a person has a traffic violation, they don't go to jail for a traffic violation. Uh, they get fined and there's other ways to uh, get them to comply. Um, so those are some of the things that we deal with, public safety and justice. Um, and so we're, we're about representing the community as well as uh, some of the core values that the mayor has put in place. And uh, we're, we're designed to work actually collaboratively with you guys. So you guys have your meetings, you discuss certain topics and issues and we're supposed to um, take the time from you guys to discuss in our group and then get it down on the floor with commissioners. I hope we get a vote where we can get a policy change. Is this a newly formed group? No, no. I, I was told it's not newly formed. Uh, I don't know how. It's been around for a long time. It just hasn't been active. How many members are there? As of right now, I think we have 12 active members, I believe. Okay. How um, many does it constitute? How many is supposed to be? I don't think that there was an when I was talking, I don't think there's an actual number. That was an actual number. Right, right. So since the task force, um, it's open to the public. It's supposed to be community driven. So it's it's been active for about a year. Uh, well, it started about a year ago, but it hasn't been active for a while. So we just got a new life here um, this year. Okay. Um, so we're currently working on building that back up. Go, Ms. Richardson. I see your hand, but I have two questions. Um, the uh, the board, the safety and justice board, is that a board of the mayor? I'm sorry. Is that a board of the mayor? The yes, 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 one of the task force. Okay, okay. This is the one that he established. These are task forces that he established. They're not commission-driven task forces. No. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Hold on. So, uh, uh, so it's been going on for about a year, but kind of dormant. Yes. And so, because of what's going on, it breaks up. Yes. Okay. I should add one more thing to what the mm -hmm. threshold so we can go to Ms. Nikki. Um, I would. I would since you all's board is specific law enforcement, if there is a broader sense in terms of what this task force is tasked with, for example, environmental justice could be a part of, of what we look at, economic justice could be a part of something that we look at. I just want to, I think part of this meeting is to get some clarity between the two. So, whatever you all recommend in terms of law enforcement specific policies, the things that we can look at and say, hey, Let's look at that and see how we can support law enforcement advisory board is doing as it relates to those specific policies or ordinance recommendations, those sorts of things. But I think our scope is a little bit broader. 
So um, your mission statement or your bylaws, stuff like that, would that be online somewhere? Uh, is it online? So I'd probably give you a website. Is it online? Uh, okay. It's open to the public for people to come in and participate in this stuff. There wasn't a, a spot where we actually put the charter on there. So how do we know it's there and when the charter so was there? These are on the UG's website. Oh, okay. So so this, this was one of the eight committees that the mayor put in when he got on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I don't know that it has any bylaws and things like that. Uh, it did. Mm -hmm. So it's right. a charter that they, they were up in regards yeah, to the topic. So, so, the the eight, process. Mm -hmm. so the eight committees that the mayor came up with uh, all of yeah, the 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 no, no, no. These, these are these, no, it's not a charter or anything. These are one of this is one of the eight committees that the mayor created when he got elected. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted yeah, to understand the LEA board, but right. 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 the LE board, LA, the LE board, board is an ordinance. Right. In charge, but right. not right. And it grew out of a concern that they made this happen. The LA board. Okay, Miss Nick. Can you hear me, Miss Nick? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, so I did have a question, but I wanted to answer some of the questions that were presented just to kind of give a clarification on what the law enforcement advisory board is. Um, so the Law Enforcement Advisory Board has been around for a little over 16 years, I want to say, and it was birthed out of a, um, a troubling incident that happened at a, a teenager's birthday party, and the Department of Justice actually came in and got with community organizers and church leaders and the Board of Commissioners at the time and developed a memorandum of understanding um, with the city and under a Kansas statute and a developed ordinance, an advisory board was made. Now, our focus as the Law Enforcement Advisory Board is to basically prevent racial bias and other biased policing, um, as well as educating and informing the community about how to file a complaint to um, local law enforcement agencies or to the Attorney General, um, also to be a liaison for the community to help build that trust and that relationship with the community and the uh, law enforcement community. So public safety and justice is a very wide scope and law enforcement advisory board really focuses on that biased policing piece. And under our statute and our ordinance, we are actually given the authority to provide recommendations directly to the board of commissioners now, the Law Enforcement Advisory Board had not done that in its first 15 years or so, but we did provide our first recommendation to the Board of Commissioners last year um, with all hopes of continuing that practice. So I'm just unsure as to why we would necessarily need to use the task force as an intermediary when per our statute and our ordinance, we're supposed to be giving recommendations directly to the Board of Commissioners, not to um, the mayor's task force to then be presented to commissioners. Um, and then um, lastly, I was just wanting to get clarification on who exactly creates law enforcement policy. Um, is that a power that the task force has or are we asking for the Board of Commissioners to create some form of policy based off of recommendations that come out of these conversations? I'm sorry if you're saying something, I cannot hear you. The audio is kind of glitching in and out. No, I, I can't hear anything. And he makes policy. Uh, there we go. There we go. I can hear it now. That's yeah. best practice or something else that we use as guidance. As far as actually making the the official policy, I don't know to do that. Um, 
So I'll let the chief answer for him. Yeah, um, police department is similar except for, um, first of all, and this is for the sheriff on their sworn also, uh, most of our policies are determined by the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center and CFOs, uh, depending on what the policy is, uh, as well as Kansas statute, as well as memorandum of understanding that we have with our uh, labor unions, um, as well as best practices around the country. But really the two determining factors on policy is the state statute and the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center and CPOs. And uh, to just piggyback, uh, here is the state statute, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that every LEA board member gets that. Um, I've cited our role and responsibility almost in every meeting, and, and it takes it a step further. We were charged with making recommendations to the Board of Commissioners and the state. Uh, uh, so ours is pretty broad, too. So um, it just seems like it's the temperature. How are we feeling in here? How are we feeling? To my regards to what we're trying to do. Yeah. I, I think um, I've expressed this today before. I, I do feel like there there has been some overlapping between two boards. Um, and uh, but I think that um, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be. We're, we're designed to actually work with you guys. We're not designed to uh, disrupt. Or we're designed to collaborate with you in regards to the law enforcement um, stuff. Now, we have other things that we have that we are charged to do with public safety, as, as he explained. I, I, I'm excited to work with you guys. I'm excited to do what we can to facilitate um, necessary change and unity. I think that it's needed. I think it's past time. Um, and I want to... Uh, I want to say this, I'm going to go on record and say this. Whenever you're in leadership, as a leader, there are things that I can do that I don't like, that I could leave a meeting and say, screw that. But it can affect the people that I'm leading. So then I have to say, as a leader, I'm the sacrificial one. I have to be the bridge. I have to extend myself for the better good of the community and those that I serve. So today, I, I beg of you to work, let's work together. Because I'm telling you what I'm saying in the community right now and the climate, I'm, I'm getting nervous, I'm getting nervous. And I don't want to have a summer of uh, more killings than what we can handle. Uh, I don't want to say the people that came by my church last week, but some of them, when they say that they are, they feel threatened, these individuals are legitimate threats. They feel that way. They say, hey, you come down my block, you shoot at anybody that comes down their block. You know what usually happens? The gang members don't get killed. Usually it's the 86 year old woman who's living on that same block that's been in one of that county trying to make change. So I am here as the law enforcement client. Whatever we got to do, what, me and him may have different political ideas. That's a part of the democratic process. But for the greater good, we lay aside those differences so that we can get something done to uh, be proactive and not reactive. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to work with you guys. I don't have an issue with us this spring. I just ask that. They profitable disagreements. That's the biggest thing, which means when we disagree, it leads to uh, very necessary conversations, very necessary uh, things happening where we, we can uh, go to a greater level of collaboration. So that, that's my thought. Anybody else? You open it up to the floor. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah, Nay, how do you feel about us working together? Let me say this. Um, I think a, a tone accent let me just say that each board has their own role and responsibility that will not be compromised nor challenged. The thing that I was hoping for is what can we do in a collaborative basis to really zero in on some of what's happening in the community now. Uh, there is nobody or no group overpowering the other group. And sometimes we talk with passion and, and, and people misunderstand what that really means. And uh, we didn't want to lose those board 
member, and we lost the board member. Uh, it was two. Just one. Okay, we lost the Just board one. member. The other one has yeah, both of So that was not the intent at all. So, um, uh, and and then we talked about. Um, uh, uh, a press conference. I don't know how comfortable I'm feeling with a press conference. Um, so we can talk about that. Um, um, I just want to clarify some things up here um, regards to the task force and law enforcement advisory board. So the law enforcement advisory board, yeah, you guys are by state statute, go through and give recommendations to the attorney general. Um, and part of that, though, there do have community advisory boards. Um, and I know that even with some of these task forces, which the chief was saying, there have been eight established in business economics, <clears throat> uh, green energy sustainability, unhoused residents, criminal safety justice. Um, and even through them, they have subcommittees that go through and look at specific resource management, uh, policy uh, recommendations, uh, so on. So as a law enforcement advisory board is moving out the village community, getting the feedback from the public, um, and they bring up things that not necessarily deal with just bias, and not necessarily deal with uh, complaints. Uh, some may have issues with things like, uh, I think the last uh, meeting that they had in Armadale was dogs, um, homelessness, um, which these things can be addressed with some of these other task forces. And with a task force that was designed initially was to go through and do some deep dives that can hand these recommendations off, uh, whether to, to the mayor, then put this on the agenda for commissioners. Um, while you guys are still working, uh, to get your yearly report, I think was it June 1st through July 30th to the attorney general. Um, and to Nikki's point, in 15 years, none of these reports have been given until, I guess, last year. So in order to help expedite this process and make it smoother, these transitions, this is why uh, the collaboration between these two uh, bodies will be able to, one, get the public the awareness that, hey, we are working for you to um, to look into everything, whether, you know, building bridges with the law enforcement, uh, law enforcement and as well as the community members. We're just trying to get community driven action and engagement. And that's the whole purpose of having these two groups work together. So just trying to bring some clarification with that. I would like to go on the 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 sister online had used the term uh, intermediary, and that's not what I see this, this task force as. Uh, but I, I wanted to just address the elephant in the room, and particularly the question that you asked. Uh, and that's how are we feeling given the temperature change. Uh, and as uh, as the newest member <laughs> to this process, uh, task force, I, I'll tell you this is ground for brush dark. Uh, uh, just to be frank, I think that uh, the intent of bringing us together was good. Uh, the impact of bringing us together with that great clarity created some some tension. Uh, I think though that it, from my perspective. Uh, I think that there's way forward, uh, but I do think, and I do uh, agree with uh, Ms. Lattimore that a press conference could be rushing things, uh, especially if there's still no clear understanding of the differences and how we could support one another in terms of our various roles uh, as well. Uh, I welcome the opportunity uh, to come to a task force meeting that you guys to know the board members you all hold. That's part of the things that we talked about. This, is, this might be my fourth meeting connected to this actual task force. Uh, so part of what we've talked about in my previous meeting was coming to both to hear and listen, just kind of understand and listen to what the community is bringing forward uh, so that we can then better be, be informed uh, as well. Uh, I think there's still some opportunities for us to do that, and I think that you know that we should celebrate that invitation in terms of you all coming to the environment uh, as well. Um, it is saddening you know, to sit here and see someone with such frustration 
could like that, uh, or resign like that uh, as well. That, you know, as a new person, send some flags uh, uh, to me uh, as well. But I think that, I mean, given the fact that you all are here, that we all are here, uh, shows that there's, there's some commitments to improving things. And I hope that we can let that be the drive uh, forward. And I totally respect the MBA board. You came out on a dime, not knowing at all. I appreciate that. I have appreciated the welcome I have received as chair of you. My concern is um, I was so up on what could come out of this positive. And uh, to, to see a board member resign because the temperature uh, uh, of the meeting, it, 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 it saddens me. And, and so, but I don't want to lose faith. I think we can move on and I think we can move in a collaborative <laughs> way, but, but we're going to have to, uh, you know, as you do a training, it's a ground and, and, and we need to establish some ground to uh, to do this. One of the things that I said when I first hit the floor is that we need a, our board needs a retreat uh, to just break up it. Just think to be an operational functional body. And, uh, and the one thing that I've noticed, the passion is here uh, for this board. And so I, I want you to stay stimulated to be concerned about your community and we do what we have to do and to not be an antagonistic board, but in fact, a board that um, works with the entity because you cannot have a good community when you're taking a fight to some long, history of behavior and then you see somebody coming in trying to understand what's going on and how can we fix it as an agency and as a community collaborative but 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 and it don't mean that sometimes it can get pretty airy in the community when we're not always on the same page based on what the situation situations are in our community. But anything we do has to be civil. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't have to do, you know, uh, you know, whose voice is the loudest, who can talk the toughest. Ain't nobody scared of nobody. You know, Jesse James, them gone. So the fact of the matter is we all in here for one common goal. And that's the safety of our community. And it takes all of us to make that happen. Even the legal department want to live in a safe community. Even Mr. Reed want to live in a safe community. You don't have to be on the board. We want to be able to go to our communities, wherever our community is, and be able to walk in our door and not feel that we're going to get shot by a neighbor or the police. I mean, that's just the way it is in this life. And um, in terms of this meeting, I got in touch when I first got on the board, who reached out to me was Reed Partry. And he um, uh, just gave me the welcome back. That's how I know so much. He gave me everything. And so then I found out that Ryan was the person from the mayor's office that was to facilitate these things. So to pull this meeting together, I called uh, Reed and said, can you get an announcement out for this meeting? And it needs to say this. And then um, the clerk said she needed to hear from the mayor's office. Is that correct? Um, okay. And so, that's how Brian got involved. But it was no hidden agendas. I have not talked to the mayor. Uh, the mayor, you know, I'm an independent operation in terms of my mindset. And so it, it's, it's, it's no, and we have said to bring this collaborative together and um, with a press conference, uh, 
uh, but just uh, you know, flat out, because if this board didn't want to go that route, we didn't have to go that route. But now I I I, I feel uh, I'm not I don't want to go that route. at this point. We we got a, the temperature got to come down. Okay, so 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 yeah, I'm glad you guys uh, asked a question. Robert, I want to make sure that this is a productive meeting. This is an official meeting. It is, but I'm saying, but I'm saying there, there, are, there are committee members texting me and saying, can we, can we, can we, after we hear everybody's opinion, because we're hearing this kind of, y'all, we're kind of going around the same, everyone, we're going to, what we're going to ask, ask everyone that's here, do you want to work together? Do you not want to, and that's what I'm saying, so we can get to the bottom line. So let me just fix it. This is, this is not a, it's not, but I'm, like, you're right. It's not a you're right. But I'm saying for for the sake of well, I think their opinion, in order to get some consensus, yeah. I hear But I want to be careful about language. You're right. That's that's my culture. That's the win. Appreciate it. The balance. <laughs> I, I I want to be clear. I respect and appreciate you both, uh, and I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. Uh, I have some serious concerns about whether a collaboration would even be legal. Well, under the UG ordinance, the law enforcement advisory board was set up purposely to be independent. And you, I be so I heard those words, whether it's collaborative or adversarial. My reading of the ordinance is that it's neither. It's meant to be independent uh, and provide independent oversight. Uh, and so, uh, if that is not to disrespect the work that you're doing. But and I think that arrangement that was, you know, kind of finished in the beginning, I'm not saying there's any malintent, but I think it would create a perception that the recommendations of an independent board are being then vetted by a board appointed entirely by the mayor. Oh no, that no, I would say no, that wasn't the intent. I, 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 I the optics I think are are wrong. And in at least by violation of the spirit of the ordinance and the review that's supposed to govern law enforcement I would I would go along with that, uh, uh, but I still think that we can we can still carry on a good conversation between the two groups. Uh, you know, conversation is what we need. Uh, we need more of that. Unfortunately. We've got 107,000 people in the city, and we only reach a, a very small portion of that. So I think what, what, what we need to do uh, is continue the listening sessions that we have uh, and maybe have that conversation with, with, other, with other committees and, and, and your committee also. Uh, but as far as the collaboration goes, uh, I don't know. Call it a collaboration or a commitment, but I think uh, operating independently like we do, uh, with the conversation that goes between the two, uh, I think we could, we could uh, hopefully make it a better place and, and uh, understand what everybody else is looking for. Uh, first, the one thing that I can't see, and, and I have this, I have this horrible little thing in my in my head up here is when you I, and I, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying you uh, collectively. When somebody says there's things that need to be changed, like uh, you know, if, if, if we need to paper over, that's fine, we do. But when somebody is so nebulous as as to say things need to be changed, uh, you know. Uh, it doesn't give us much to work with. So I, I say, I would, even, even, are you saying you mean like you want to get specifics? Are you saying definitely that be specific? Uh, you know, I, I printed off a number of the issues. And thank you, Chief, for, for, for making the website for the PD readable and got up again. But I pull off a number of, of, uh, we can, we can of email, general yeah. orders. We can email you some of the uh, points that we're going to respond to. It might change from. Uh, about I don't know we have no issue when everybody else on the board as well. And I and I think that would that would give some talking points to 
either because when if we're going to present something to the commission uh it's not going to be broad based it's going to be something specific like uh like the, the, the body cams or, or, or the new shot spotter or whatever the case may be you know we're, we're going to have to come down uh, it's written this way and this is what we think because of the of the conversations we have with the with the public uh, and and that's what i'd like to see sure i'm so uh, I so um, that's about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, I got a couple of things I got to get to. I think what I was just saying, I told you I deserve my comments for tonight. Uh, won't speak for the chief, but I uh, will. And Jeff, I'll speak for myself. Um, I think we're going to have to get to the point where we can 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 that's what's going to continue from the sheriff's office. I won't speak for the chief. Um, if a problem occurs, if something happens, if there's something that needs to be discussed, uh, I'm always open to have those discussions. I'll have those discussions with anybody. Uh, but when the dust settles, my policy, my procedures um, are going to be in line with the state statute, uh, in line with best practice, and at the end of the day, what's best for Collective group, those policies that we do not only represent, uh, but also start from the safeguard. Uh, so I would agree. I don't think a press conference is appropriate at the moment. Uh, that's, a, that's a decision I guess you guys make as a whole. Uh, but we're going to keep doing what we need to do to make sure that we're on the same side. And let me be clear when I say collaborative. Um, that's not a, a, I gotta think of the word I want to use, but it's a meeting of the mind when I talk collaborative. It's, it's not going to take an ounce of independence from the LEA board. Hopefully, it won't take an ounce of independence from your board. It is a situation where, and it doesn't, I don't care what you're charged to do. You can work with anybody to get to the end that your charter calls for. So we 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 will never uh, um, be so stuck on independence where we don't invite opinions. I mean, not opinion, voices from all parties concerned for the good of our community. So that's what we want to live with. But in terms of giving up anything to any group, that's not in the cards. So <laughs> it's never going to be. So we have to be careful about <clears throat> how we're coining all of this. Um, uh, uh, I was real open to talk about how this board was doing what they do, we do what we do, but the common goal was the safety of our community. That was the common goal. It didn't do anything about taking something away from here or taking away from there. But then it, something happened in here, and 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 it just set me back. I stayed up back. I need to pull me up. Can I make one comment? Um, yeah. From what I see here, it's probably the the biggest confusion is is a leadership position. It is is the feeling that, that there is that, that we're overwhelmed with leaders. We're all volunteers. None of us get paid. I tell you, I I'm not afraid to go any place in the city. I'll walk down any street in the city and have walk. And I will work with anybody in the city uh, for any reason to make the community better. And so what, what I think we need to do before there's a press conference or anything, we need to, to decide uh, and then involve everybody and get everybody on the same page because we're all on different pages at the moment. You're the chairman of law enforcement advisory board, he's the chairman of one board, and we're all just little soldiers here, and we're, and we're trying to figure out which direction we're supposed to go. And guess what? And, 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 and I'm a volunteer too. Yeah, we are. That's right. And, 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 and I think it's a great deal that we all work together to 
because we all want the same thing. So we all have to get on the same road and, and we all have to get behind the same engine pushing the train, pulling the train. And, and that's, that's, and as far as working with anybody, great. More people we have, the better, better. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is um, collectively, uh, what the table the press conference for now. Uh, so I want everybody to feel comfortable. Um, well, and, and excuse me, uh, I don't want to interrupt you. Sure. But we, we keep talking about the press conferences, and, and we don't know what the press conference was even that we're taping. It was. So, so well, what happened was we had to yeah, 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 So it was supposed to be a Thursday, and who was it? Well, let me just say this. It's like the big, it, it, it was to say to the community, Hey, these these bodies exist, and we want you to be actively engaged with us. And that was really it. This is this, really it. this is exactly the conversation Irene can, can tell you that that we had that involved holistic service. Yeah. That yeah. that was that was so so. If you guys are on board with that, then we can turn the listening service into what what they were what we vision demand. Sure is to get people that don't normally participate, don't normally have contact, that don't know know anything about any of these boards or anything else, to start coming and talking yes. and get their opinions. And that's why we take the notes and that's why we don't say anything to them or give them answers. We just listen to what they say and the board take the notes. Well, and, 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 and yeah, and we don't get in the, 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 the discussions with them and, the, and so, so it's great. It's yeah, great. And we were going to have, I see her hand. I, I think another reason why it was great for a press conference is for me, what I'm seeing, the climate I'm feeling uh, amongst the different blocks, uh, I'm uneasy. I'm uneasy. You should have some of our listening to them. They were pretty uneasy. Yeah, well, well, that's the thing. I, I, as, a, as a pastor in the black man, every day is listening to them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my, my church has known people come, people come in there. Uh, You'd be surprised, but my concern is, is Kansas, City, Kansas is very close to being the next person. It's very, very close. And uh, I, I'm talking I get here this. from from the sense of uh, there are those um, who are in the community who do not understand uh, the laws and how things work, and so when there's a breach of communication, their mindset is to defend themselves, even if they're in error or wrong. And so what happens is innocent bodies get injured. Police officers get killed. Uh, people in the community get killed with our, our harm. So it was designed to be proactive to, to say, hey, there are bodies here working to, to ensure, number one, we hear your voice. We're, we're working with the police department. We're working with the sheriff's department, working with the DA's office to ensure that we're doing whatever we can to be proactive and make one that kind of mistake. So it wasn't, and she expressed this to her credit. Uh, we were going to have very, uh, very strict script of what we were going to say. We were not going to uh, get into things if you have any business getting into. We were simply going, it's going to be a positive press conference. Because I do think in the climate, something needs to be said. When nothing is said, then people start making their own narratives. And that's where you get into a very dangerous game. Uh, and so I'm concerned the summer is getting warmer. Uh, and I just don't want to see a month, two months from now, I'm doing funerals for people that I've seen for years because we were like, oh, well, you know, we, we can't, we, we can't do this. No, we need to do whatever we can to do something positive. So I think with proper preparation, that yeah. can be done. Okay. But I don't know the two days. Two days. Two days. That's right. I, I would agree with everything you said. Okay. It needs to be done. Right? So you're saying it takes a little more time. Uh, yeah. Cut the uh, and, and yeah, you're fine. We like to see. We're, we're, we're out. And every day, just uh, dealing with a lot of stuff. Uh, but one thing I, I want to mention to both boards is that when we talk about policy and policy changing, it would be great if the board kind of took the initiative to really know what the police department does, like ride along our citizens' academies. So then when you do decide that you have something that you go, oh, we might need to look at this policy change. I mean, you're not just basing it on, that's how I feel. You actually know what the police do, what they can do, what they can't do, and you understand the policies and a lot, 
lot of other things. And thank you to Mr. Wynn here, who mentioned last, I think the last meeting about our policies. We found out some of those were on there that we're in the process of getting redacted that we're going to put on there. Um, so just about everyone should be on there here in the next couple of weeks. Um, some was in delay because we had to, like for instance, one won't be on there like stalking for obvious reasons. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so that's something that's coming. But I think even like shoot, no shoot scenarios, we can set that all up. And I think the advisory board as well as your committee should really be educated kind of on what we do. Go on a ride along, look and see what's going on in the community on some of these calls for service. Sure. Hold, 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 hold just a second. I'm sorry. Ms. Richardson. Sorry. Ms. Richardson. sorry, I had I had myself muted. Thank you. Um, I know it didn't get around to me, but I'll go ahead and answer the roundtable question. Um, I second with Mr. Wynn and Mr. Soptic. Um, I just, I think the spirit of the board is meant for it to be autonomous and I'm not 100% sure on what a collaboration would look like right now. Based off of what was recently discussed, um, I can give some recommendations um, for future discussion. Um, Ms. Lattimore, you mentioned that you were interested in creating smaller work groups for the board. Now that we know that we don't have to be worried about being in violation of a quorum, we may want to discuss as a board with setting aside a separate subcommittee that works with the Public Safety Task Force, if that is what they're looking to do. Um, we can also collaborate on, on these field trips and, and activities that Chief Oakman just, just stated. Um, when those get presented, they can be provided to both committees and you know we can network while we're participating in those activities. Um, if the, the goal of the press conference or this meeting was to just get more awareness around um, the task force. Cause like, um, I believe that was Mr. Dwayne Beth stated that um, that's what the law enforcement advisory board has been battling. You know, we've been around for over a decade and nobody even knew we existed. I didn't even know the board existed until I was appointed to it. And so we wanted to make a greater effort of being um, a source to the community. We would extend that recommendation to you all as well to you know, do outreach events to be more effective, but I would also partner with Strategic Communications. She was recommended to partner with the Law Enforcement Advisory Board on helping us getting our brand awareness out there. I'm pretty sure Ashley Hand would be more than happy in helping the task force you know, get a post circulated on the Unified Governments Board or you know, being more active on you know, when your meetings are and things like that. I just don't think a press conference is going to be the most effective way. Um, and a lot of the people that I'm sure that you're mentioning, Mr. Bradshaw, that have these issues probably aren't watching the news. Um, and I might be aging myself as a, as a millennial here, but I don't watch the news. Um, I, I get my news from my cell phone. So, so a press conference would be missed by many people. A lot of times we as, as members of these committees is because we're volunteers, we have to push our own message. People see the board, people see these committees through us as individuals. People know that I'm on the law enforcement advisory board because I don't shut up about it, you know? So a lot of that is just, you know, a personal responsibility that you have to take on um, as you're trying to get that awareness. I just don't think a press conference would be the most effective way to do it. And I think that's all of my two, three and four cents. Uh, a press conference could be good, but we're not. There are all you know, um, the way my closing is, I'm happy that we had such a great turnout. I'm happy that people are interested and care. And um, there is, I think what's gonna happen with the LEA board is that we're gonna discuss this at length at our meeting. And um, then I, 
your board won't do the same. And how we can see pulling pieces together for the good of the community that could happen. And I'm going to keep pushing for the LEA board for a uh, retreat to really organize where we are. I want you to know I was a part of that 16 years ago when they this resulted in a LEA board, uh, LEA yes, board. I, I was a part of that conversation when that kid happened with the police and all of that 15 years ago. So that's how long I've been around and I knew about this board and lost total sight of the board because it was not doing what it was commissioned to do. But we're going to do it. We're going we, we to make everything happen and get out. So that's my closing uh, remarks is thank you the LEA board for coming out and wanting to hear and the people that didn't come sent some wonderful text saying that they can't be here, but I'm interested to find out what happened and anything I can do to help. Well, we didn't get all my uh, uh, accomplished here today, but we did accomplish that our board will become stronger and what we can do together in terms of getting the word to the community. Yeah, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to see this communication go a little bit farther too, and, and the chief brought it up, and I think uh, you know, Sophie did too. Uh, when they go out, they put their pants on, they, and they, they protect and serve every day. Uh, back when Ferguson happened, you know, uh, Chief, uh, I can't remember who the Chief it was, but, but we, there was everybody called into the into the third floor of the of the uh, police department over there, roughly two hundred. Of, of the community came together with, with the law enforcement as well as the community. And we we tried to diffuse, of course, the, the, the issue with Ferguson here. And I and I thought it was really good, but the, to me, the lack of communication was, was so apparent because out of the 200 people, uh, when I had my turn to speak, uh, I asked how many people worked with their neighborhood uh, groups. Nobody put their hand up. When I asked how many of them worked with the NR, uh, uh, the uh, Neighborhood Resource Center, nobody put their hand up. Uh, when I asked if they worked with their, their uh, business revitalization groups, nobody put their hand up. So everybody was concerned, but nobody was doing anything. Nobody was talking to each other. And the, and the thing that that impressed me after the fact, I I, I went on the the uh, citizen what's called the, the citizen uh, law enforcement up oh, okay. the, the, the academy, uh, and we found out what these guys have to do every day. Uh, I was on I was on both of them, sure. Law enforcement. And the thing that impressed me the most, and I and I would and I would love to see us being able to open that up to everybody for clarity on what happens with the police department and the sheriff's department. That's the fast machine. What what they have to do in a split second needs to be put out here. People need to see that. If nothing else, just the community leaders uh, go go through that go through that patch training, the simulator, the, the, the shooting simulator. Uh, I know when when Commissioner Johnson and I went through, he got killed twice, and so did I. But it it opens your eyes. It it gives you something to look at and and start realizing what what we have here right. or what we don't have. Okay, so. Right. Any, anyway, what I'm, what I'm saying is if there's a way that we can open up that, that's training to a lot of people, uh, I vote yes. We got two more years of record. Um, I just want to say on the record that 
Uh, I'm very concerned that Kimberly Weaver resigns in apparent protest of how this is operating because there are very few people in the county that I respect more. And I share a lot of her frustration. I think we'd be doing ourselves a disservice to talk about communication and not be honest about it. But a lot of times when this board has asked for data and policies to do our stated job, we have not received them for months. And we're still waiting for data and policies from the police department, which have not come. And I think with that status quo of communication, this board cannot fulfill its mission. And it's frankly a waste of time. Can I ask a question? She said, I'm through, I'm done. I didn't hear any reason. So I don't think I didn't this speak. I think it was some other stuff that was going on. So I, 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 get, I, I guess I would like to hear why she would leave before we step on that one. So before we get to that, she just asked a question from requesting any. So in December, the board was put through in guidance in, in compliance with state statute, the anti bias training, and was asked are there disaggregated data on racial arrests so we could evaluate whether this training is working or whether there needs to be more of it. That's within the mission. I don't think it's an attack on law enforcement agencies to ask for that relevant data. We were told, we'll get back to you. We've heard nothing. I asked, I know it's been only a couple of weeks, but I asked about each course. There should be, that should be on our website. We look at the we just we just finished we just finished that report about two weeks ago that ended in December. That would have been December 31st. We just finished that report about two weeks ago. We finished our 20 20 year usually is around May when we finish our annual. It's in our annual reports, and we just finished that, I want to say about two weeks ago. Waiting for approval from that. I don't want there to be an adversarial relationship between law enforcement and the law enforcement advisory board. But this board has been met at times with what I would describe as hostility. From and, I, and I have been met with hostility from this board. And I've asked for examples of that. I have not received. I'd like to say something. Um, I've been involved with this board for six years. Uh, Paul's been on it longer than I. But I really feel that where the direction we've gone is not healthy for the community, and that we all need to realize we're here to help everybody. And maybe if we look looked at and had legal come and explain to us what our roles and duties are. Because I think we kind of veer too far when we're starting to talk about active investigations and litigation and stuff like that. I don't think that's our roles and duties. It's not how I've read the ordinance. And I, I just think that we need to kind of leave, check the egos at the door and come in here with the attitude that we're going to make everything better for everybody, including ourselves. And I have not seen a lot of that where I have meetings. Um, I want to say, and I respect everybody at the table. You, you said that, that there was information you actually didn't receive. The chief just said that we can, if, if you guys can talk, we can get that information. Would that be, I think that would be a nice step in the right direction. Hopefully, we can begin to move forward with that. Because I, my, my, what I feel, and I'm going to be very honest, I feel like um, there are agendas at play. Um, and that's a very dangerous thing when you're in a office to serve the community. Um, you want to make sure your agendas are for the great good. Um, I don't know everything. That's why I apologize. I don't know everything. As a pastor, I have some blind spots. That maybe you guys don't, but I do. And there are sometimes I'll think something is absolutely right, and as time goes on, I'm like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't calculate that. That's why this is important, these conversations, so we can begin uh, to, to build 
whatever, and I'm going to act as a pastor, whatever happened yesterday, let's have a new day. Let's, let's, let's communicate. Let's get something in place. We can communicate. We can work these things out. The Bible says, how can two work, how can two walk together unless they agree? Agreement comes from sometimes wrestling in Greek and Hebrew. It literally means wrestling to words, which means I speak my piece, you speak yours, and then we find a common ground where both sides can say, I can live with that. I can function. So what we're trying to do is really create a culture. We can't create a culture and community. We can't do it in order. So your questions are valid. I, we want to have those questions, but I want to have profitable disagreements, which means they equal out to uh, better processes, better communications, uh, collaboration. So that's, I, I think that that's great and the cheap answer. So hopefully we can, we can start. Today can be the beginning of something new. We're in here. We're not trying to infringe on you guys' board. We're not trying. We're simply just trying to uh, build bridges. And we need that in one of that county badly. So I, I think this is, Chief, you said it's on the website. Um, yeah, Chief, not in the future. I think I hear, I'm glad you're trying to uh, provide some neutrality to, to, to the tension that exists. You know, for as someone who's, who's taken over a 40, 40 plus year old organization, I uh, understand you know, sometimes you can inherit things that are good, hear things that are bad, things that are indifferent. Um, but let's, let's not make a mistake here. I mean, what I've heard from LEAB uh, is that, I mean, 16 years is a long time. That predates. And so, you know, there's, I mean, there's, that, none of that has anything to do with our uh, But I think that there's some things that kind of worked out. Uh, and that's, that's the chief and the, and the board uh, as well. Uh, as a concerned citizen, I, I just want to see that there be productive conversations yes. and, and the needle move towards some real transformation so that people can, you know, prosper. That's all. And I've been here since March. <laughs> you, mean, well, you, you are, you've been staying for years. And you know, I'll say too that I've had a lot of questions at the beginning and I've done probably a dozen ride alongs in the city, but I also go when I travel. It's kind of a weird little thing I have, but I encourage everybody to do them because it is a mind opening. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me just share this. Face. Let me just share this with you. As a as an organization that represents the Trust of Bridge Creek Community and Criminal Justice System, I've, I've seen both sides. And personally, I've gone through FBI Academy, we've gone through police academies, all that. Uh, we've gone through the Office of Shooting Training, we need some on. It's great to have that insight. So, on the flip side of that, you're a, a, a member of a family that has just suffered the loss of a loved one. Due to, due to, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you want answers. And my oftentimes, brother was shot in the line of duty. So yeah. I'm saying, I got the answers I needed. But, but oftentimes, when you're uh, regular folks, especially let me just speak as a black person, when, when, when you're part of a black community that has suffered from the hands of law enforcement for 15 years, and then there's an officer involved shooting that ball, there is a sense of open wounds or wounds that are reopened that provides attention that may not even exist in that moment. But when you're talking about, when you talk about police investigations, there's no words that will be shared with that family. And that's because of the investigations that are going on. I understand that from a place of neutrality. But when you're trying to work through these things, it's difficult. It's difficult. Uh, but that's why I'm, I'm hoping that these agencies and this board can work together. Leave tough conversations that have to be hit. Yeah. We, we spent one hour, and I don't everybody but me to just hold on. Uh, uh, we one hour, so we got five minutes, and we're going to wrap it up. Miss Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will, I'll be I'll be brief, Miss Lattimore. Um, and I'm sorry that the chief and the sheriff had to leave and not hear this portion, but um, I'd re be remiss if I if I didn't defend the room uh, in Kim's absence. 
Um, Kimberly left, just so everybody is clear. Um, she's, you know, expressed frustrations, you know, to anybody who asked, you know, how she was feeling about the board for months. And there is a lot of um, trust building that needs to happen with the board, primarily from when our efforts to do something different. So Ms. Melton brings up a, a really good point. So she's been on the board for six years and she's only recently noticing this change and this difference. And I truly do believe that the only reason why there is this difference, this animosity, this defensiveness, if you will, um, is because the Law Enforcement Advisory Board was attempting to do what it was instructed to do. And I think in the past, the board has just been a sounding board for crime stats. Um, and never really asked those tough questions. And so as we've been trying to ask these tough questions, um, I will have to say I disagree with Chief Oakman. I don't believe that anybody has came at him with any form of animosity, and I know he's not here to defend himself, but I do think people have asked him tough questions that maybe those tough questions weren't asked before. Um, we have gotten some, some defensiveness from law enforcement, primarily Chief Oakman in the past. And the reason why I'm speaking up is because Kimberly's had to defend me in those situations when I've, when I've asked those questions. So I have been on the receiving end of this. So I second what Marcus says, you know, we have tried to be collaborative in the past, but oftentimes when we do ask for question, ask questions or we do ask for information, there is resistance, there is defensiveness, and we're still trying to overcome that. Um, I'm hoping that maybe one of Ms. Lador's retreats will fix that. Um, but there is a collective lack of understanding about what the Law Enforcement Advisory Board is for a lot of the members. And I do think there's going to be a call of action very soon um, that will bring all the bodies to the table for us to get a clear understanding on exactly what the Law Enforcement Advisory Board is supposed to do and where exactly the authority is supposed to lie. Because I think a lot of the reasons why Kimberly walked out is because as someone had mentioned, there are a lot of leaders that are pulling at this and it is not clear exactly where the authority is coming from. We lost our chair uh, from what we understand from what was reported in the media because the mayor had some side conversation with law enforcement leaders and that forced um, our previous chair to be removed. And then we got Ms. Lattimore, um, which has caused a lot of disruption and a lot of confusion. So um, these are just real things that we're trying to overcome as a board internally, but I do feel that we are still doing effective work. I mean, we've had two, in the midst of all of this, we've had two very successful listening sessions with two more to come that people are anticipating. Um, so I know if we can accomplish that, amongst disarray that we can accomplish even more once we get some clarity, some understanding, things in writing, policy procedures and standards. Um, yeah, so that's my piece. It's It's order. It will happen, and hopefully it will be 100% participation. And we will chart our course because it didn't happen yesterday. It didn't happen last week. It has been forever, this board trying to find this way. And so we're going to find the way. And I'm a person. We're not going to have all the outbursts and all of that kind of stuff. And people have the right to speak their mind and their opinion, but it's a way to do whatever it is we need to do. So we will have that retreat. And just like today, I'm so happy that everybody came out. We heard and saw what we heard and saw. And then we'll just take that to the next level. We will do order. What, if we won't have 100 spokesmen from this board, I am the chair. I will be the spokesperson for this body. But everybody will be heard and respected on this board. And what I fear will be what you say to me to speak. And so um, with that, I'm happy that everybody came out. Uh, uh, we are going to keep the conversation going. We will not have a press conference. Um, and our board has work to do. I'm sure your board has work to do. And so there we are, and here we are, and thank you.
so much for coming out, legal department, and Mr. Betsy. Before, not we, before we dismiss, I want to say to I want to clear the air, Miss um, Miss Nikki. I I want to apologize. I think that was that. I, I didn't mean to raise my. I want to I want to apologize to you. I respect your work. Now seeing your face, I'm very uh, aware of many many things you do in the community, and I am with you, my sister. I love you. I hope that you'll forgive me. Everybody else in the room, I apologize, and I hope that we can move forward. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.